I like to use titles such as king, queen, I don't like to use definitive terms such as the best. The best shotgun, the best rifle, those to me don't work quite right because a king is not necessarily the most skilled fighter in the land. Nor is he the most powerful, nor is he the brightest scholar or the best figure skater. The king, however, should embody the best qualities, the best attributes and the spirit of his nation. Which nation? Why, the shotgun nation, of course. Hey guys, welcome back. As always, my name is Lazar, and today we're going to be diving deeper into this fantastic primary weapon. As per the usual, actually not as per the usual, I'm going to have two cheapo builds for you because this is just that insane of a weapon and a couple of Riven setups. That said though, please keep in mind that my builds and guides usually take a new player friendly approach. I like to take my time and explain a lot of the aspects that veteran players should already be accustomed to. So in case you're a veteran, please bear with me. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Kuva Comb. Let's begin by quickly having a look at how the weapon handles without any mods equipped. And for that, just a couple of free shots. Before we go any further though, I've been up all night trying to get some additional weapons to make some reviews, so I may be a little bit tired, sorry about that, I will give you what remains of my energy. Now, the Kuva Comb functions the exact same way as the Comb, for the most part, you're gonna start off with a single pellet, but the weapon does ramp up rather quickly, it does have a spool up mechanic, and as you can see the fire rate does definitely increase. At full fire rate, you're gonna be looking at 4 ammo per blast, so it's definitely not one of those ammo efficient weapons, but it more than makes up for it in pure destructive capability. Now, with that out of the way, let's have a look at a stat comparison between the Kuva comb and the regular version of the comb to see what are the pluses and minuses and all whatnot. Now, keep in mind that the regular version of the comb was already a pretty huge monster in the right circumstances with the right setup. Accuracy is 8, it doesn't really matter. Again, we're talking about a shotgun and to be honest, for a shotgun, the comb has pretty decent accuracy. I mean, you're not gonna have any real issue hitting targets up to 20 meters or so. Okay, fine, you may miss a couple of pellets, like 10 of them, but it's still gonna be fine, it's gonna be dead, trust me. Critical chance, 19% instead of 11. That means that critical chance is now favorable on the Kuva comb. Now, 19% as a base isn't something sky high, but it's a whole lot better than 11. Critical multiplier, the same, 2.3x, and they also touched up the fall off. No idea why, because it's almost the same between 13 and 26 meters. Fire rate 4.17 instead of 3.67, and believe it or not, you actually feel this in gameplay. The fire rate increase is somewhat noticeable. Also noticeable is the fact that they reduced the magazine from 245 to 209 and that's a bit of a bummer. It's especially considering that they didn't do anything about the goddamn reload. They could have reduced the reload if you reduce the magazine, huh? maybe something like that. Punch through, we're still getting 1.5 meters worth of punch through, which is fantastic. Status chance is the biggest buff for the Kuva comb, 30% instead of 25%. Now, this is a pellet based weapon and with the 460-60 mods, we're going to be able to reach the true 100% status chance when all of our little pellets will be applying a status. Now, which status effect? That's another kettle of fish, but the point is we can reach that true 100% status chance a lot more easier than before. When it comes to the damage, it does have slightly lower damage, but the problem with this comparison right now, with the screen that you're seeing, it doesn't take into account the bonus element that you will be getting on each and every single Kuva comb. What you're watching right now is the base version of the Kuva comb, which cannot be obtained. Each and every single version will have an elemental bonus. In my case, this is actually a pretty good freaking roll. This is a 58% electricity roll, and I recommend you guys try to get electricity, Toxin, oh my god, Toxin would be fantastic. You can even go for Heat. The brand new Heat proc is a lot more powerful than before. You can even go for Rad. But keep in mind, there are still some bugs right now. If you want to avoid all the drama, just go for Electricity. That is my uh, suggestion to you until D manages to fix up all the bugs. So, if we take into account the elemental bonus, then we're also looking at mostly the same damage, give or take. I think this one has about 32, and if we're going to be comparing really, really quick to the other version so it's 32 versus 24 30 again a bit more damage on the kuvacom nothing too significant though 
Now mod capacity, you might have noticed it's 80 out of 80, which is a bit weird. Now normally when you get this weapon, it's gonna be 30 out of 30. You jump into actions, you plug in that beautiful Orokin Catalyst, and you're gonna be getting double the mod capacity. Keep in mind that you can pick up your Orokin Catalyst from Nightwave. You can also get one from the Daily Sortie, and you can also pay 20 plat to have one installed. Now all of the Kuva weapons, all of them act like the Parasesis. That means that in order to get all the mastery points that you can out of them, you're gonna have to forma them five times. Now I'm not saying that the build requires five forma. No, you can get away with two. You can get away with three forma on these things. But if you want each and every single mastery point, you're gonna need to forma it five times so it finally reaches the rank 40. Again, it's a new type of weapon, so there you go. It's actually beneficial considering that we do have a weapon Excellus mod slot nowadays, so we can make use out of that extra capacity, and it's a bit more flexible as well when changing from one build to the other. Now, let's jump into a standard build. And we got damage with point blank, multi shot with health chamber, critical chance, critical damage combo between laser sight and ravage. Now, laser sight is an event only mod, the Acolyte event, but the guys on trade chat, usually on PC, this one goes for about 10 plat give or take, it shouldn't cost you too much in case you don't have it. And in case you don't have it, you can go for the safe approach, and this one is called Blunderbuss, 90% critical chance. The problem with Blunderbuss is that, well, it's 90%. Laser Sight offers a lot more at 120%, but it's a bit less comfy to use, a bit less guaranteed than Blunderbuss. So, there you go. With a 19% base, with Laser Sight up, we should be going to something like 40-something percent. Now, this is your cheapo build, which is why we're not using Prime mods. If you guys got Prime Point Blank, go for it. Prime Ravish, definitely go for it again. But for everybody that does not have, first we're gonna be testing with standard builds, then we're gonna let loose with some Prime mods and some Revens. Now, let's talk about status chance. Four of the 60 60 mods will mean the true 100% status chance, as you can see, before multi shot effects. So, even if I take Hell's Chamber off, you see that my status chance remains at 100%. That means that all of my little pellets will be applying a status effect. So, now let's have a look at what exactly am I proccing. Impact, Puncture, and Slash, the physical types in Warframe, have a four times greater chance at applying a status effect over elemental types such as Radiation and Viral. So if I multiply Slash times four, it's over 200 in this case. So basically, the proc priority right now is gonna be something like this. Radiation and Slash, then Viral, Impact, and Puncture. It's not ideal, it's definitely not. Why? Because the radiation is a tad on the high side, but we can take care of that just a tad later. Unfortunately, this is not as cheap of a build as I would like, because Shellshock goes on the PC trade chat for about 60 to 80 plat, so it's not exactly cheap. Now, my friends, you do have an option with more to set up, but first we're going to be testing the weapon out like this. Keep in mind that this elemental combo is made because we got a slash build on our hands, you should definitely try to combine it with Viral. Viral on the status proc will be reducing the enemy's max health for the duration of the Viral proc to 50%. So for that limited amount of time, your slashes are kinda gonna be dealing double damage. Level 120, Corrupted Heavy Goons. And of course the excellent slot was Vigilante Supplies. Vigilante Supplies, that means no more ammo issues at all and sometimes I will be getting a crit up, so bear that one in mind. Alright, let's go for it. Corrupted Heavy Goons level 120 and after my shotgun is pulled up, you'll see I'm able to absolutely murder these Corrupted Heavy Goons without any real issue. And keep in mind, this is no fancy mods. And when I say fancy mods, I mean Prime mods or Ravens or something like that. No Prime anything and as you can see, I'm just tearing through these targets like there's no tomorrow. I'm barely even breaking a sweat. Now it is a bit on the clunky side, it does take a little while for it to spool up, so what you can do if you don't want to use a mod to increase the fire rate, you can use an arcane to increase the fire rate. So bear that one in mind. It's a common arcane, I think it's called, yes, it's called arcane tempo and it does apply to shotguns only. So keep that one in mind. Now back to this one, I promised you a cheaper solution to shell shock, didn't I? So here's what you can do, mode to set up or nano app, actually nano applicator, forget about it, it's not more, it's not cheaper, but again, it is an option if you want to go for this one. Mode to set up, however, from a DPS perspective, if this one would be up all the time, it would be fantastic. 100% critical chance and status chance, but the problem is it's only for 4 seconds after landing from a double jump or a bullet jump. It's definitely not ideal. 
We are doing a whole lot of bullet jumps and double jumps in Warframe, but keeping that up and just looking at your buff bar just to make sure you have the buff up is not exactly what I would call fun, but this would be something a bit cheaper. And again, from a DPS perspective, if this one is up, then it's way better than having Shell Shock. Ideally, would have given up on two of the 6060 mods. And here's a bit of a fun fact. If you guys got a weapon with a 30% base status chance, for example, a shotgun like this one, you don't need 240% status chance, as in all the 46060 mods. You need 234%. Bear that one in mind for when we talk about Riven mods, okay? Obvious reason why. Yes, yes, awesome. So, double jump, yay, mode to set up, and you will see that the performance of the weapon, you're, you're gonna see it as mostly the same. It does perform quite a little bit better, because again, I am getting a bit more crits on my targets, and that means, well, better damage. Oh, by the way, if you still don't know how critical chance, critical damage, and all those multipliers work in Warframe, I got a fantastic guide for you. Link in the cards right now. It's a lengthy watch, but uh, it should be worth your time if you don't know how this stuff works and all whatnot. Now, this is one way to go about the Kuvakom, and to be honest, the performance is absolutely fantastic. Just a couple of shots, and I'm absolutely murdering these targets. So this is the reason why we're going to be increasing the level of our targets, but not just yet. What I want to do next is try a different approach, okay? I think everybody knew at this point that a status build on the Kuvacom would be absolutely fantastic. And again, the biggest buff is that 30% base status chance. But let's forget about that for a second. If, enough with all this status and jumping around and all what. Now, what about Hunter Mumu? Everybody's favorite Mumu, yes? Well, does it work? It works actually quite well. A lot better than I thought. And on this build, we also got shotguns pass. So let's review. Point blank, of course, Hell's Chamber, multi-shot. We got critical chance, critical damage, wood. Laser Sights, Blunderbuss, Ravage, and Shrapnel Shot. 99% critical damage. By the way, I should have mentioned this earlier, I just forgot. Go for Shrapnel Shot if you're okay with the activation condition on this one instead of Ravage. Because look, 99% versus 60%. Okay, so you do have some options. And again, we're going with Vigilante Supplies. Speaking about the Excellus mod, guys, plug in whatever you want. It won't make a huge difference, but I believe that Vigilante Supplies is the optimal choice. Because again, this weapon is a bit... Ammo hungry, especially when you start off with fire rate, and you are gonna be getting that 5% chance to enhance critical hits. Don't get me wrong, it's not the end of the world, it's not the biggest buff, but it's something. So, there you go. When we're talking about fire rate, well, not a whole lot of options. You can go for Vigilante Fervor and say, oh my god, that 5% chance, it will be a whole lot. No, no, again, it's just like a very tiny, tiny cherry on top. Don't treat it like the and be all end all, it doesn't really matter all that much. Here's a mod that I have a problem with, Frail Momentum. Why D? 90% for minus 15% damage, why? Look, look at this one D, look, you see this one? You, you gotta know this one, you made it, right? See, see the problem? Add at least 140% on this puppy, so it's actually viable. When it comes to the fire rate mod, again, it's up to you, you can even make your shotgun silent and take it on a spy mission, because, because why the hell not? One more time, the same Corrupted Heavy Goons, level 120, and no, I have not forgotten, I will increase the level later. Again, this is Crit Slash, let's see what it can do, no status or anything like that, and as you can see, my friends, not only does it feel better, but it looks a whole lot better too. The fire rate matters a whole lot, the punch through is working wonders, and it, the weapon is a whole lot more enjoyable to play like this, just because of the additional fire rate. Just because of Shotgun Spaz. And again, you do five Arcanes, you can go for Arcane Momentum. So if you're bored of status and getting all the 460, 60 mods and jumping around, then you can go for a simple build such as this. There is nothing expensive on this build. There is no Argon Scope. Well, the Argon Scope of shotguns would be laser sight, but that one is cheap, guys. Again, template. If anybody asks for more than template, they're not being a very nice person. So there you go. This is another option. Which do you prefer? It's entirely up to you. But did you notice something? This weapon absolutely shreds with common, ordinary, average, everyday builds. But now, now my friends, it's time to take it up a notch. We gotta talk about ribbons. First things first though, all of these four beautiful ribbons are not mine. Not a single one is mine. Sadly, all of them are loners from my viewers. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate you letting me test these beauties. Mwah! Thank you. I appreciate it. Now, the first thing we're gonna be doing is testing out the old standard status approach. Check this one out, critical chance, toxin, status chance, and plus weapon recoil. Now let's keep in mind, my friends, that the Kuva weapons, 
do not share the same ribbon disposition as their normal counterparts. If you take a look at the regular version of the comb, you will see that the ribbon disposition for this one is 5 out of 5. Where is that beautiful, beautiful ribbon? There we go. Here you go. Much better stats than before. The Kuva version, however, will be having lower stats because the thought it was a good idea to introduce different dispositions within the same family, but they're only doing it for the Kuva weapons, so bear that one in mind. Now, this beauty of a ribbon doesn't offer me enough status chance, so I can renounce two of the 60 60 mods. For that, I would have needed 114%. But here's what I can do I can go with one 60 60 mod, and I can go for more to set up as well. Now I got the true 100% status chance. I also got some critical chance. I also got some critical damage with Prime Ravage, more damage with Prime Point Blank, and Shotgun's Pass for that beautiful, beautiful fire rate. The only problem? I gotta jump around. Not a fan of that, but hold on, I got one more ribbon which I wanna show you guys. And of course, Vigilante supplies yet again. We're gonna be spawning in the same. Actually, no, it's point. I'm not gonna be spawning 120s. It's pointless. We gotta go higher. 145, whatever. This is the highest I can spawn. But even these guys are a little bit weak for this weapon. Take a look. <laughs> What, you already already typing, where's the viral with the slash? There's no need for viral and slash. I mean, the weapon is gonna slash, but it's so not needed. Take a look. If you blink, you miss it. And look at all the bullets I missed, all the shells I have missed, all the little pellets. My friends, this is a fantastic weapon. And you might believe that, goddammit, Lazar, it's just the same old story as before. The comb is amazing if I get a specific ribbon. Well, that's what I thought too initially, but then I realized that mathematically speaking, this weapon has enough horsepower that it doesn't need anything else. It doesn't need status, it just needs a little bit of crit. Hmm, but seeing is believing, so why don't I show you? We're gonna change the build up just a tiny little bit. We're gonna renounce status altogether, so we're not gonna need motor setup, no toxic barrage, and no status riven either. We're just gonna go for brute force with what exactly well more crit more crit is always good my friends trust me no no hunter munitions trust me there's no need for slash but of course you can go for something like this especially if your critical chance has reached at the very minimum 70 percent guys okay uh it's not of course it's not necessary to go like that but from my calculations that would be ideal go for hunter momo when you have at least 70 ish percent give or take this time we're gonna be using this beauty right here, check it out guys, multi-shot, damage, critical chance and minus slash. Now, normally this ribbon is or was used on the normal version of the comb and there because of the higher ribbon disposition, it was over minus 100% slash and you might say, hey, that's a terrible idea, but it's not. Because reducing slash altogether will make room for something else to proc and a lot of players like to play their combs like this. Removing the slash completely, if possible, and then just treating it as a super duper armor stripper. Trust me, it can definitely kick some Rs. It's a option. We're gonna be taking off Vigilante Supplies because I don't want to form out one more time. And we're gonna be using Prime Charge Shell. We're gonna put Shotgun Spaz over here. And of course, we're gonna be making our Corrosive Elemental Combo with Contagious Spread. Now, right now, my weapon has a 70% shot status chance that means that that's the chance that one of my pellet will be applying a status effect but i don't need it anymore because i got so much raw force you will not believe how this weapon acts now one more time the same corrupted heavy goons level 120 and check out what this weapon can do not a status build not even a crit build this is just a raw force build How's that? That's a single magazine, by the way. <laughs> it's just beautiful. It's hard to build this weapon wrong. It's got so many options. So you don't need a status ribbon anymore. You don't even need a minus IPS ribbon anymore. If you do have a ribbon for it, though, if you roll something like critical chance, critical damage, multi shot damage, something like that, you can keep it. You no longer need necessarily to have status chance to get the best out of the weapon or necessarily minus IPS because with a ribbon disposition of 3 out of 5, you cannot roll minus 100 IPS. Okay? So bear that one in mind. But it doesn't matter. 
The weapon absolutely shreds. You think I'm cheating? I'm not cheating. There's no auras here. There's no arcanes. There's no anything that you think moderate. Mod, by the way, it doesn't apply in the simulacrum. But just to make sure you guys don't think I'm pulling a fast one. Here, Unairo. We're going to be respawning the same targets one more time. The same 145s as before. Did I say 120? It was 145. Take a look. This is the weapon. It's just simply that damn good. And again, it's simple to build. Even with a cheap build, it will still perform. And right now, mostly everybody is hunting down those leeches. And this has been the best weapon to do that. Oddly enough, because I kind of like got it from them. Now, there's still one more thing which I do want to do. Bump up everything with Warframe buffs. And you might say, what's the point? It's killing everything anyway. Well, the point is fun, my friends. Which was the whole point of playing Warp at the beginning. Anyway, Lady Mirage Prime. For an aura, what are we going to use? We can use something like Rose Projection against Grenier. It's more than enough. For Arcanes, hmm... I can go for double Avengers, okay? That will mean guaranteed critical chance without any problem. I can go for Rage as well. You can use Harrow with the Comb, definitely. Now, let's double stack Avengers, that's 30% and another 30%, 60%. Yes, Arcanes do double stack, link the cards right now for a full demo on that one. Now, one more time, the same level, 145s, but you know what? Let's just, let's spawn more of them. Let's spawn more of them, it's not enough. Eight is definitely not enough. Corrupted. About 20 of them should do. So one more time, Corrupted Heavy Goons level 145, only this time they're gonna be on pause so they can hit me and I can get me buffs. Of course, Mirage is free ability for a fantastic damage increase as well as her lovely clones. Best animation in game. Honestly, I feel a little bit dirty doing this simply because the comb does not need something like this. Excuse me, the Kuva comb does not need Warframe buffs to absolutely shine and destroy everything in mere seconds. What are you talking about now you see him, now you don't? This thing is just on a whole other level. And I'm not talking about just the raw destructive capability. I'm talking about how flexible the weapon is. I no longer need a specific ribbon to make it work. That's absolutely beautiful. That is absolutely beautiful. Now it does require a much higher mastery rank. It's true and it can be a bit of a pain to farm. So once again guys, for a progenitor, you can go for electricity, you can go for toxin. Oh my god, can you imagine it? pure toxin or a pure gas comb beautiful absolutely beautiful and you can also go for radiation if you so desire or heat again right now we're looking at some bugs when it comes to kuva leeches go for electricity to avoid all of them so that would be my recommendation for the time being after they fix the bugs feel free to go for toxin feel free to go for heat here's one question that i never really liked what's the best warframe or what's the best weapon there's no such thing there can be no such thing in warframe because it depends on your application where are you going what are you fighting what exactly do you want to do with said warframe for example for the longest well everybody believed that chroma was the highest damage dealer when it came to eidolon hunts that proved to be false just one example but if i'm thinking about shotguns getting back to the kuva comb i love the shotgun category, it's the most powerful range category. MIDI is still strongest, by the way, in terms of DPS and all whatnot. Or better said, it can be after we figure out exactly how to rebuild our weapons. When it comes to shotguns, I love the Arcaplast more. It's such a fantastic weapon to run mid-level missions. If you're going high level, the Arcaplast more falls off, especially considering that they nerfed the Riven Disposition quite badly. It's still my favorite shotgun, nothing will change that. I love the War Prime. The Stern Wraith, another fantastic heavy hitting shotgun. The Corrent, another fan favorite. So you see, we have a ton of powerful weapons. By the way, the Phantasma, another beautiful weapon. But none of them have this level of destructive capability. And none of them are this flexible. For these reasons, my friends, the Kuvacom is now the king of shotguns. As always, my name is Malazar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe if you enjoy the content. If you got any sorts of feedback for me, I would love to read it in the comment section down below. Also in the comment section down below, if you guys got any particular suggestions, a weapon review, a weapon versus, and rest assured, I am working my hardest to grind out all of the Kuva weapons so I can bring you guys detailed reviews just like I got new used to. You can also find me on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, all the usual places. And if you love the content, consider supporting us via Patreon. Until next time, my friends. Bye-bye.